Good morning, guys. Uh, it's April 17th of 2022, so happy Easter if you celebrate the holiday. And uh, I just want to always remind you, if you are struggling, especially on a day like today, it's a holiday. Uh, I'm going to talk about secondary losses today. Um, it, it may be a day that you're really struggling based on what you've gone through. Um, sometimes in divorce situations, you end up spending the holidays alone. Sometimes in death situations, same thing. So um, if you are struggling, if you really feel like you need someone to talk to, if you're feeling hopeless, uh, please look below. There are several numbers and several resources for you below. So one of the strangest things that happened to me or the most unexpected, I guess, is that when my son got sick with epilepsy, um, we had so many other losses. And yes, there was the illness um, and that was a, a big struggle. It was a big shock. Um, but he would have very good times too. He would have months on end with no seizures. So it's the type of illness that kind of, you know, you're going along and you almost restore your life back to normal and then it hits you again. And then you have the medical bills again. And then the ambulance calls again at school, you know, and, and we had a first aid plan and all of that. But seizures are very scary and I, I can't blame people for feeling like, what do we do? And um, then when my son passed away, it was even, you know, worse. We, we had come in this 10 year period of time where my son was sick and uh, then we went into his death and we're about three and a half years into his death. Uh, he passed away in July of 2018. And one of the most shocking things are all the little effects of that. Yes, we grieve him, we miss him every day. And we are slowly um, coming to terms with that. We have mourned openly and in many ways. And we have done the work. And so, yes, we, we have come not through that to the other side. But we're just in a, in a happy place. We are very blessed and feel very happy even with everything that we've been through. But there are other losses that have not cleaned themselves up like that. There are so many aspects to losing something. Again, whether it's a divorce or a, a business loss. Um, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Uh, if I do, sorry, in advance. Um, yep, here it comes. <laughs> oh, goodness, sorry. This is real live video. I don't know how to edit, so um, pardon me. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> if I knew how to edit, I would just chop that part out, but that's not happening anytime soon. It's something I need to learn. Um, I'm desperate to learn it for the channel so that I can interview people. Um, so it's not all about me and you listening to me all the time. But anyway, I wanted to review an article. It's called, I Don't Know Who I Am Anymore, Grief and Loss of Identity. And this is by Litza Williams. So, of course, it's posted below and you can go look up the article. Please read the article in full. It is so good. Um, it's something that you might want to refer back to depending on where you're at in your loss and in your grief journey. It may be something that you don't think you need right now, but, but things happen, you know, as you, as you get better in some areas, other things keep coming up. And I think too, um, we have so much at once to handle that we're just kind of in that mode. And then when we start to come out of the fog and we start to feel a little bit better, it shocks us that some of these things are still here. You know, my son's been gone three and a half years and I still have some struggles that have to do with his illness and his death. And uh, it's really shocking. I thought, you know, work through the death and then, you know, um, kind of, it will always be there, but I just didn't expect all of these things. And this is what this article addresses. And there are many like it that do talk about what's called secondary losses. So um, for me, one of the main ones was my loss of identity, my loss of self-esteem. Um, when my son died, I guess I'm not the most, you know, confident person anyway. Like I just, inwardly, I'm a pretty confident, courageous person, but outwardly, I don't have the mannerisms of someone who's just, you know, walk into a room and steal the show type thing. I've, I've never been that kind of a person anyway. And then when my son died, you know, it was really hard to walk into a room 
without anyone meaning to. They were whispering, you know, there's the, you know, the couple that lost their child, or there's the lady that lost her child, or boy, she looks sad today. And people don't don't mean it. You know, that has gone away after three and a half years. I'm just the person I am. And if they're saying something about me, it's about me that they just don't like me or something. But um you know, it, it was very hard for someone who's kind of wanting to be outgoing, but I don't want to have attention drawn to myself whenever I walk into a room. And for really like a year, maybe even more, people who you hadn't run into, and especially, you know, as COVID got worse, you hadn't seen these people. And so you're still the person, oh yeah, you know, they lost their child like a year ago. And it, it just hasn't completely ever really gone away a lot due to COVID and people not seeing each other. Uh, all of us are just now seeing people. So in 2018, when my son died, there was about a year there, um, year, year and a half when um, locally we went through that. But of course, we weren't traveling as much. We were kind of trying to stay home and just find our path, find, find some recovery time. And then when we did start going out, you know, it still was new for other people to see us out finally. Um, they define self-esteem as the way that we think of ourselves, how we define ourselves, and the story we tell ourselves about who we are. Um, it often is kind of in the background, this article says. Like your self-esteem, your thoughts of yourself, your identity. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a, I'm a this. I'm a certain status at work. Um, all of these things, they're in the background. You know, you don't always walk into a room and say, hey, I own the place at my job. But when you lose that job, all of a sudden you realize, wow, in the background, that was a part of my status. That was a part of where I, I derived my self-esteem from. Um, when we experience loss, we are focused on the thing that we've lost, our, my son or your job or your marriage that fell apart. And that is a huge part of grief, but there is this other part of grief that we're less aware of, and this is all um, out of the article. And it is the secondary losses, losses that happen like dominoes falling. So the first domino falls, and then maybe your work performance isn't as good because you're in a fog and you've lost a child or you're you're going through a breakup in your marriage and 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 you're trying not to bring it to work, you're doing everything you can not to bring it to work, and yet you know, the, the dominoes just kind of stack up. Um, but it can create far more to cope with than just that one basic loss. And especially three and a half years into my son passing away, these are what I'm struggling with, if anything. I'm not saying that I'm not struggling still with the death of my son. You know, holidays are coming up. Today's Easter. I'm not the young mother I was having three children running around with their Easter baskets. I don't have any company today. My children are all, they live far enough away that they just felt like they couldn't come today. So my husband and I are alone today on this holiday. And we're not used to that. We're used to big family dinners. We have this huge table that seats 12 people. And we have nobody. It's just my husband and I. And we are going to church. We are going to go to the breakfast. But then we're going to come home alone. You know, there are many aspects to this grief. And my mom, she is in Texas by herself. She was just widowed in January. And I've been to Texas about four times since January. So from January till today, April 17th, I've been there four times. But it just didn't work out for Easter because she still works full time. So she couldn't really fly down. She has two dogs. And I couldn't get back up there because I'm preparing to go back up and actually help her relocate down closer to us. So she's spending Easter all by herself and she's newly widowed. And it just hurts. It hurts my heart. All of these secondary losses, you know. Um, sometimes you will find, and I think this was a big one for me, a lack of self-clarity. So um, my mom, she, uh, you know, doesn't want to live alone in Texas. And, you know, she had moved out there for many reasons, mostly her husband's health. So they had moved out there, relocated. There's not really that many people that will ever come visit her there. Um, I go and my family would go, but it would be once or twice a year. And all of our family is kind of centered more down here in Wyoming and Colorado. So she wants to move back, but she's having to make all of these decisions 
you know, when her husband only passed away in January. And this is by her choice. We aren't rushing her. We're fine with going out for several years if she needs time to make a decision. But in her mind, she's just kind of done with being out there by herself. Um, her husband was sick for several years. And so to be out there by herself has already been a lot. And during COVID, we couldn't go because he was sick and we didn't want to take it to him. So she's been kind of alone. She's been there and done that. And now this. So, um, but she's making all these decisions when your mind isn't quite clear and you've been through this traumatic event. Um, so people who have grief of any kind, there is a much higher rate of depression and post-traumatic stress. So um, I didn't feel like I went through a lot of depression, but definitely some post-traumatic stress. So I want to go through these quite quickly, and then I'm going to make a, a you know several more videos in the series that break these down. Um, but this is just kind of a brief introduction, and so look for part one, two, maybe even three and four. We'll see. Um, our relational identity. So like in my mom's case, she's not a wife anymore. She's not married. She has no spouse. She's 74, but she liked being married, and now she's not married. So we lose our relational identity. When my son died, um, I was his caregiver, not hands-on as much as maybe someone who has cancer, but I was his financial caregiver. He would miss days of work because he'd have a seizure, and for the next day, or if he was supposed to go into work a few hours later, he had to miss work. And so I was his financial caregiver. That was my identity. I worked really hard and lots of hours, but I was sending it to my son, who also worked very hard, but he, he couldn't always get his bills together because of his epilepsy, and it was part of my identity I was proud of myself you know I'm I'm helping my son and now that's gone I I don't I'm not needed in that role and my other two children are either married or dating and you know there's a letting go where they need to be a part of their family and build their lives and so my husband and I don't have children here today we're kind of alone and there's a loss of identity with that professional identity I'm going to do a whole one on this one alone. I did struggle at work after my son died. I didn't struggle. I, I mostly struggled in my relationships because, um, and I'll get into this more, but I just felt awkward. I felt like I was making this big walk into work the first time and everyone was so kind to me there. They tried. They did everything they could to make my life easier when I was there, but my life just became too different and relationships that I had had with mostly people much younger than I was. Um, I was one of the oldest people at work there at my workplace. They just became very awkward because I was grieving and there were certain religious aspects where I think they thought I should be doing better and you know, it's just a whole long story, which I will tell not in too much detail I, because, again, there's no judgment. Um, no one did anything bad to me. It's just the way it all panned out. Um, spiritual identity. Now, I'm still going to church, and I have never missed church since my son died, but I have struggled. I have been at home and been like, man, you know, Lord, I mean, especially now, you know, like, not just did my son die, but now we're still struggling in all these other areas, you know, with our identity. What, where do we retire now? You know, now we have two children. Do we center our whole lives right where they live and smother them? You know, do we do that? Now it's not like we have three choices. We only have two choices. And um, again, I'm very blessed I have any choice at all. You know, some people have their whole family wiped out in one swoop. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know, my whole identity as far as where I thought I might retire, who I thought I was, all of that has changed. And I, I will get into that. But so I've asked God before spiritually, like, Lord, you know, why all of these things piled up? You know, losing a child is enough. Why all of this other stuff? Financial identity. This is one that I will do an entire video about as far as a secondary loss. Um, I am a very thrifty person. I've created an entire business around being thrifty and shopping for deals and reselling those online on eBay and made my whole living so I could stay home with my kids. And then when my son got sick, I definitely had that as part of my identity. I'm a very thrifty person. And yet I couldn't pay my bills. Here I am, you know, someone who works really hard. I was a nurse a lot of the time. We had, you know, a lot of good salary coming in. And yet I couldn't buy groceries without some of the time using my credit card. And so I saw, I saw myself one way. And yet over here, my life didn't match. 
my life didn't match at all. And that's why I had this, this stress in my life because I know who I am. I know what I'm trying to do. I'm someone who saves. I don't want to go to retirement with nothing. I don't want to end up, you know, having to depend on my children. I'm very independent. And yet, you know, I was having to take money from people, you know, when they would offer it because we were so destitute from all these medical bills. Um, that's a whole nother thing. And then our outlook. Um, People, I think, before Tim passed away, not everybody, because I would have my negative days, but I was very up all the time. You know, yes, I'd be sad sometimes, but for the most part, I was a very positive person. But then when my son died, I tried to be, I mean, I went back to work right away. I tried to be, but I also cry very easily. And so a lot of people mistake crying for depression or inability to control your emotions. Um... A lot of things and so all of a sudden my outlook had become a little bit down to I would have my my days since my son has died where my outlook wasn't as positive but even when I would hide that in front of other people I think it still just showed it just showed on my face you know and so my own outlook and the way people perceived my outlook changed and so my whole identity and how some people perceive me definitely changed and I will be talking about that um, the article also goes into what do we do now? And so I will be referring back to this article. Um, I may not be someone who could stay out of debt. You know, I struggled when my son was sick to stay out of debt. And so my identity there changed. But my identity over here has gotten better. I'm someone who can handle an emergency. I can be sitting here and my son f would fall backwards down the stairs. And honestly, it had happened so many times that I would get up and go see what was there. Did he break his teeth? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to have to call the dentist. Oh, okay. Uh, does he have a head injury? Nope. Nope, he doesn't. You know, he's fine. He goes through all the neuro checks. Um, as a nurse, I'm fine. So my identity has built up over here since my loss because I am strong and I'm able to handle emergencies that other people can't. So um, that is just a brief introduction, brief as in 16 minutes, that's brief for me, but I'm going to let you guys go, I do have to get off to church, and please in the coming days look for me to do about four to five separate videos on each of these secondary losses. I'm praying for you today, I understand the grief, it doesn't matter if Easter, you know, my son is an old, would have been an older adult. He wouldn't necessarily have been here getting an Easter basket from me. You know, that part of my life has changed. I'm not a young mother anymore. But there's still grief today. And I'm assuming that if you're watching this video that you might be struggling too um, in, in, in a job loss or a loss of identity. So please take care and please check back. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.